So um, the idea is that our students now, these days, the, the average student has a phone in their hand. Um, they have technology with them. Yet teachers are not evolving along with the students. We think of um, technology now as something separate from the learning instead of it being a blended classroom where it's really a part of the learning. Again, that's where our students are headed. That's where they're at now. So we kind of need to evolve with that. So that's, that's really what it is. It enhances the learning in many ways. Um, one, w which was kind of the theme of, of the, my presentation earlier, is it's really where our students are right now. They, they, the, their phones, their iPads are a part of their life. And if we want to, to communicate with them, if we want to participate with them, we're going to have to speak their language. And technology really is their language. Technology also helps expand our classroom environment beyond just the three or four hours a week that we have them. Outside of that, we can include things like a discussion board, uh, videos, um, where you, that's when you start getting into a, a flip classroom. Flip classroom meaning you do your lecturing and your, your content outside of the classroom, and when they come back, you work on problems and, and other questions and issues that they had about your lecturing or, or information they, they did outside a classroom. So the, the, it's been flipped. Yeah, the, um, in regards to competency-based education and online education, um, online education, when it first started, it, it opened up education for those that didn't have access to the traditional environment. Um, typically, we're, we're talking about a younger student that can take three or four years out of their life and participate in a classroom environment. Um, online education opened up that classroom environment to people outside of that realm, um, working class individuals, um, single mothers, people that live in a rural setting that couldn't afford to, to come in for whatever reason. Competency-based education, I believe, takes even online education farther. Competency-based education um, brings in the, the time factor and it enhances the time factor a bit on that. So if, if someone that's coming from an engineering background come, doesn't have time or maybe doesn't even have the inclination to sit through a math class, for example, competency-based education allows them to progress or show their competence in that mathematical content in a quicker amount of time rather than sitting for 10 weeks or 18 weeks in a classroom when they already know the information, they can display their competence. So in the end, online education and company-based education together helps them save money and, and provides access to this education that didn't exist before. I think competency-based education enhances online education. I think it works well with online education, but a traditional program can be competency-based as well. I mean, you, you can, again, you can start with those standards and then develop competencies in a traditional program or in an online program. Okay. Yeah, the, the completion rates are very similar, if not better. Um, our, at Western Governors University, we happen to have uh, our average age student is 37, so that helps us a little bit. You get a, a more motivated and a dedicated student instead of talking about an 18-year-old that maybe doesn't quite know where they're headed. Um, it means more to them. Their, 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 their money means more to them when they're spending it. Their time means more to them when they're, spend, when they're spending that time. So when you're talking about a 37-year-old student who maybe is on their second career, they're, they're going to be a little bit more focused and maybe even easier to teach to than an 18-year-old that doesn't quite know what they're doing. My background's in teacher ed. When I came to Western Governors University, I actually came as a faculty member. Then I became a department chair and developed the online programs, competency-based online programs. And now I moved into the accreditation piece and compliance piece. The, um, the accreditation piece, I, I got attracted to that through the NCATE process. The NCATE is the accrediting body that, that uh, accredits teacher college programs. I was uh, uh, at the spearhead of that for Western Governors University. And after participating in that, I was attracted to that process. And so from there, it just spanned it out. And, and, 
And now um, we've had more accrediting bodies. Obviously, we have our regional accreditation. Um, we also have nursing accreditation. So I've just taken what I've learned from the, accredit the NCATE experience and then moved that into the other accrediting bodies. And then with the states as well. Every state has regulations. If you want to offer a program in that state, um, you have to make sure you meet their standards and guidelines. So I make sure that the whole university, the faculty, the administration, the staff, they're all aware and our programs meet the standards of the accrediting bodies and these individual state compliance. Lessons learned. The, the idea of constantly based education is showing that you're competent in certain skills. If you take those skills and attach or, or develop those skills or competencies um, from the standards, your accrediting body standards, the majority of programs out there, educational programs, have standards that they have to meet. If you take those standards as the base, bring in um, a bunch of educational experts, subject matter experts in that particular program area, start with the standards, take those experts and develop competencies that one would have to display to show that they know that content area or know that subject area or that program area, develop competencies from those standards then if they're attached to those standards, later on when you're trying to show that, be a, get it accredited in those programs, because your competencies were built from the standards, you can take everything. I mean, all the learning resources that you use to, to, to teach, to, sh to, to gain the proficiency in those students, those are attached to those standards. And then your assessments are also attached to those standards. So when a credit body comes and says, how, do you, how can you display that your students are learning these standards? Well, your whole program was designed from the beginning on those standards, because all your competencies were, come from those standards. So accrediting bodies, which is kind of what we're trying to, to get as accreditation and, and, and make them happy, we can show that from the very beginning to the end. So start with the, the accrediting body standards and develop competencies from there. <laughs>